we have a funny story about Joe Rogan having to apologize for misinformation regarding some fires in LA, I guess, or in California have been happening over the what last couple of weeks, especially in the midst of some of the riots. So I guess he was on with who was it? Douglas Murray, um, the author of Madness of Crowds. A recommended read for anybody that's um uh, interested in learning more about you know social justice warriors and you know social justice issues in general um it's definitely a very eye-opening book in the same way that mark ronson's so even publicly shamed is source occupies the same sort of space so um i guess they got talking and joe rogan mentioned something about antifa being responsible for lighting up some of the forests and causing some of these forest fires that have ravaged parts of california and obviously there might be some truth to it but i guess the way he kind of said it made people be made he made he made it seem as if this was a bona fide fact when you know it's hard to very to to kind of i guess it would be hard to um claim one way or the other whether or not it was started on purpose or whether they're just like a natural occurrence especially considering uh the magnitude of the damage so this is from cnn and i guess the reason why they're reporting on it is because um joe rogan apologized which isn't a bad thing right he's you know he's it's it's actually an honorable thing that he decided to apologize so many times in media now especially some of the mainstream media outlets um they're very quick to report on things with misinformation or to paint the narrative in a certain way but they're not quick to kind of retract or to recant some of their statements they just leave it out there to kind of stoke the fires of discontent and division that exists especially in parts of america and especially here in the uk too so they're not the most responsible uh, of people in the world at all so if anything the people on podcasts are because for the most part if you listen to a place like joe rogan number one he's not cnn he's not fox news he's just a guy you know talking shit with his friends on a podcast smoking weed drinking whiskey so you shouldn't be taking everything he says as gospel anyway and even if he does say something that is completely out of line he has a benefit and the beauty of having his own show where he can literally just turn on the camera address the fans and say hey i got this wrong as he's proven with this show with this um episode so it really does say more about mainstream media that they think he kind of looks bad because he said something that was wrong and then apologized for it then does about joe in my opinion but anyway let's continue the article says the following um joe rogan reportedly the um not reportedly it is true um the highest paid podca podcast host in the whole world has apologized for spreading misinformation to his millions of listeners about the west coast fires during a recent episode he said i need to make apology to the duh and retraction i said something on a podcast with douglas murray about people getting arrested for lying fires and i got duped it was wrong actually let's play the video of him actually saying i don't read the article let's play the actual video of joe rogan apologizing himself and we'll get to the article back in a minute <clears throat> Hello, everybody. I need to make an apology and a retraction. Um, I said something on the podcast with Douglas Murray about people getting arrested for uh, lighting fires, and uh, I got duped. It's wrong. Uh, there was a, one guy who got arrested for lighting fires somewhere else, and someone sent me something about people getting arrested for lighting fires in Portland, and I said it without looking into it. It's very irresponsible. Um, I just I didn't check. I made a mistake. I fucked up. And uh, I'm sorry if I duped you as well. Um, there's nothing I can do about it now. It's out there, but it's definitely a mistake. My apologies. And I will take this into consideration, sh certainly, when I uh, say things in the future. I know it feels very irresponsible of me. I don't take it lightly. I'm very upset with myself. And uh, I apologize to you as well. Sorry. So pretty heartfelt, pretty sincere, nothing really wrong with that, right? But let's continue with CNN. So it says the following, I'm wrong. Roden made comments during an episode with his podcast, Your Experience, which, which featured Murray, author of Manners of Cars, and released on Thursday. The Roden Experience, which was added to Spotify on the September the 1st, will become an exclusive later this year. It's one of the most popular podcasts in the United States. Again, I think sometimes with these articles, it seems like they're purposely trying to smear him or pressure Spotify into dropping him. I'm not too sure why, but it, it does sound a little bit snaky. But let's continue. Rogan, a comedian who built his brand around No Holds Barred, interviewed with some controversial guest tops Forbes 2020 list of the highest earning podcast again mentioning his money and his influence and all that sort of stuff what is that is that like a 
patriarchy thing i don't know weird anyway um he says there is a madness going on here rogan said during the first episode you you want to talk about madness crowds that exemplifies that right now they have arrested people for lighting forest fires up there um they have arrested left-wing people for lighting these forest fires you know air quote activists and this is also something that is not widely been reported so cnn's uh, brianna keller said on cnn newsroom on friday the topic has does not been widely reported because it's hashtag or quote unquote not true what has been reported is that there are local and state officials out all to all through the region who have been coming out and refusing or refuting sorry these conspiracy theories again i'm not sure why they're painting as conspiracy theories i don't think it's that far out to suggest that there might be some um some bad actors who are going out of their way to start fires in order to kind of further i don't know what disrupt what's going on in the country at the moment in america i don't think it's that far-fetched it probably is happening whether or not it's roving gangs of antifa people masked up wearing all black traveling around in vans throwing cigarettes out of windows and stuff everywhere they go that's obviously another case but um, i don't think it's too far i don't think it's it's protecting too far saying that that could happen it could why why not it's not that far-fetched cnn's um national correspondence um correspondent miguel marquez told kyla that local sheriffs and fbi have investigated and are being uh, begging people to stop spreading false information indeed the fbi on september 11th issued a statement saying that it has investigated several such reports and found them to be untrue okay fair enough in his instagram post on friday rogan apologized said listens that he, he may have been misled um this is far from the first time rogan's been spurred by controversy but if CEO Daniel Eck addressed his employees again another remark to maybe try and get him cancelled concerns on Wednesdays about his recent remarks Rogan made about transgender people uh da, 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 da. um and just continues here in May Rogan signed a multi-exclusive video Spotify da, 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 da. okay cool so he apologized for saying something wrong about his podcast which isn't a bad thing if anything this maybe is a, a clear indication that Rogan has maybe grown more in influence than he's actually aware of i think he mentioned it prior in one of his shows he said that now he kind of finally realizes the influence and the reach that he has on his show because considering how successful and wealthy of a guy he is he's pretty level-headed and you know has pretty much has his feet on the ground and um, he tends to kind of carry himself in a very um normal quote-unquote way i'd say he doesn't let his success get to his head so i think that training that kind of self-speak in, in trying to kind of you know not he's he's obviously very conscious of not trying to he doesn't want to turn into a dickhead right he doesn't want to ever be that guy who gets uh you know develops or builds a massive platform and then somehow along the line just turns into a complete cunt and you know it turns off his own fan base on him because i think most broadcasters in that mold of a rogan uh, media figures have done that some long some time along the way right they've essentially turned off their original fan base um they've made some enemies within the industry on their way up through some back you know for some shady business deals and they've essentially just been you know essentially they're in a position now where they can't get cancelled they can't get replaced because they're just kind of you know they're part of the fixtures but they're also someone that not a lot of people like but i think jerugan's kind of the opposite of that he's well liked and he seems to just kind of do his own thing but i think now especially with the spotify deal that amplifies his voice obviously put some money in his pocket it's definitely brought about some more scrutiny that he probably would have um liked but it's also kind of made him probably realize that hey i have a responsibility here to do as best as job as i can presenting the truth or presenting the facts as i know it so that he has a leg to stand on when he's complaining about ancient media because you can't be joe saying on truth and then complain about um fox news causing division cnn causing division md msbc causing division in the country trump being a bad leader you can't uh, or spreading misinformation and lying you can't complain about these things if you're doing the same thing also and i guess he's setting a good precedent he's saying look i made a mistake i'm putting my hands up here's the error that i've done i'm going to try my best to make sure that i don't make these errors in the future and if i do have a dubious fact especially as i think it's different if he's talking to bill burr about this issue it's done probably in jest there is some sort of comedic element when you're sitting down with a douglas murray and you say something like this i can understand why some people take it more seriously because you're interviewing a an intellectual public you know yeah one of those kind of like you know political talking head people who essentially spend their entire lives on twitter searching these kind of news so you'd imagine it might be some level of truth to it so i don't necessarily see the bad thing in him apologizing if anything it's even another indication that quite possibly Spotify have their hands around his neck in a way that he hasn't necessarily been 
that truthful or honest about it to his audience because I think in the beginning he did make it seem like hey it's going to be the same show no changes we're just going to be licensing out to Spotify but considering the missing episodes that they don't they're not on the Spotify now at the moment the Alex Jones is the own Benjamins and all these other people and Milo and then considering what's going on now with this recent apology it does seem that although he did get the big check and he did get some money in his pocket that is essentially going to secure the fu- the futures of his family for generations to come it has come at a cost in some regard in terms of the podcast he now has over he now has corporate overlord or overlords who can influence or make some editorial content decisions on his podcast and he's also he's also kind of publicly apologizing for things and um, no better example of uh, just <laughs> what the issue is here than um, our man joey diaz decided to get on the tom segura um what I think podcast I think it might be your man has live and basically left made this comment regarding the thing that Joe Rogan's going through now at the moment I'm gonna play for you now bear with me there you go hey, Joe, uh, Joey Diaz's thoughts on the whole issue <laughs> you gotta you gotta like these once a day you gotta like these mother- what do you think about our buddy put an apology for that who Joe Rogan, Rogan but he got a fact wrong oh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Poor Joe Rogan. He put the apology up. They would tell him go. He he was that's hard for my dog. Yeah, my heart goes out to him. He had to put an apology up and shit. I guess he things were good when he was things were good in the basement, dog. Once you take that Spotify money, <laughs> you got to start apologizing. <coughs> you don't believe you care about trannies. Oh trannies. god. <laughs> now he's got to go to a tranny today and donate ten dollars. <laughs> Any day now, you'll see Rogan hanging out with trannies <laughs> down in Austin, jumping up and down. You know, the poor guy. That's what happens when you get that money. When you cash that big check, you got to watch what you say. Aren't you lucky you're independent now? <laughs> you guys were upset for a couple weeks. Uh, nobody wants to give us any money. Did you see him? He's got to do the apology. My name is Joe Rogan. I don't kill. I can't go kill D and O boy. I can't do nothing no more. A hundred million. Uh. <laughs> very accurate right if, if ever i think uh christina p is um drinking of the water there is very uh apt and i guess that again is the issue this that should be a a cautionary tale for all content creators if you are going to take the big bag from these corporate overlords you're going to have to accept that you're going to have to give up some level of whether it's creative control whether it's autonomy whether it's direction whether it's all authorship you have to give up something in that exchange there's no way that you can even someone like a joe is a good example he's essentially one of the rare unicorns in the creative content media content content space who has a few money who can do as he pleases but even in his position he still has to backtrack make apologies uh re- agree to remove some episodes from the sh- from the platform on spotify and then lie about it to alex jones i never mentioned on his show um i even think the other show you had on the maybe the first one where the guy kept kind of probing and mentioning and he never kind of bit or went to talk about the issue at all so he's obviously very concerned about the issue that you know he's essentially buckled on and he's censorship an issue that he's kind of ragged upon his entire time that he's been making the podcast but again that is the game you play if you want to take that big check you're going to have to accept that that company or that corporate um, entity is going to have some voice or some opinion when it comes to the stuff that you're putting out there it just is what it is